Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. This is the IMDb Studio at Acura Festival Village. And look, it's the cast and crew of Zola. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, you guys screened yesterday and everything, according to Twitter, and people that I ran to do, said you went through the roof. How was the screening? I think it went well. I, uh, I'm the director of Zola and the co-writer. I uh, was physically present. My body was there, but I think my brain and, um, and my spirit might have been sort of above the theater. Mm. And when I could check in, it seemed to be going well. Uh, why do you feel that way? This is not your first time at the dance. This is your second dance, correct? This Lemon, is actually a couple years ago? It's my second feature at the feature. festival and the fourth time I've played work at the festival. But every time, I think right before you show it, you know, you you know, you direct work. It, it stays Barely. with, you no, know, you do. And it stays with you for this period of time and then sudden you, suddenly you release it mm. and it is exciting but also terrifying and a strange experience to, to amputate the piece in a way. Right, but at least if you're going out there with something, you're armed for battle. Heavens, this is a very, uh, the movie comes from a Twitter thread, is that correct? And is it your Twitter thread? Yes. yes. Take yes, us it into is. it. Um, take you into the Twitter thread? Yeah, 2015. <laughs> Why do you write this thing? Um, well, it was like my third time writing it on Twitter. And I don't know, writing is just my way of like forgetting things, kind of like my healing process. And so, yeah, I was healing through it. So I was rewriting it and the engagement was there. It kind of just took a life of its own. Um, it, did you ever in a million years imagine like, oh, this is cinematic material? Yes. Did you really? <laughs> yes. She wrote it like a film. I, I mean, it has a proper <laughs> yes. three-act structure. There are strong characters. There is an arc. There is uh, so much energy in it. I mean, it had read like, to me, it read like a script. And, and when it came to adapting it, the most important thing was how do we translate the voice that is, you know, this electric voice that is in every drop of this text that would be perhaps the most challenging thing. Otherwise, it was there. It was so visual and visceral and aggressive. Uh, so yeah. Oh, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was adapting a book, pretty it was, much. I mean, to me, it was no different than adapting a piece of text. It is a piece of text. I think that what Asia did was tell us that there are there is potential for source material outside of what we are used to. For the, those at home who are like, well, what was it about? Try to, try to tell the story. It is a dark comedy. Uh, two women become fast friends and take a road trip from Detroit to Florida and this things. Fast. <laughs> fast. <laughs> they become fast, fast, fast friends. <laughs> and um, things don't go as, uh, as planned or pitched. Uh, now, <laughs> you play her, correct? Yes. What is it like playing a real live person? Um, <laughs> pretty incredible, actually. I mean, I was terrified because I obviously just wanted her to approve and <laughs> I wanted to honor her and honor what she's been through and make sure I hit the character. But um, I prepared, I worked at a strip club for a month to prepare for the role and kind of went in undercover and just got into the mindset, eat or be eaten. Riley, you play the the chick who brings her into this weird, wacky world. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like? Um, it was actually very fun to play. Um, it was a time I'm often asked to be like very understated and like naturalistic and whatever. Mm -hmm. And Janixa wanted to go like big with it and make it as crazy as possible. So that was really a fun experience for me. Um, and, you know, I think and it's- you're funny. I also, to me, you are so funny in spending time with you. And it was so important that we shine how funny you are and your comedic timing, which I think is quite brilliant. And <laughs> in the other work that you've done, you are more subdued and the tenor is a bit more dramatic. And it was so f exciting to get to play in this new way with you. Yeah, I think that's kind of, I think, in life, I'm not super serious, and mm -hmm. I'm much more silly, and 
as you can tell right now. What a laugh, right? I have pneumonia. This is so goofy <laughs> right now. now. This is um, the goofiest I've ever seen really you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have pneumonia. I'm sorry. You seem heavily medicated. So I'm like, heavily yeah. medicated. <laughs> Janigza. <laughs> um, Nick, you play her significant other? I play her boyfriend, lo lover, um, her longtime lover. I'm not her baby daddy, but she has a child that I take care of with her. Um, I deeply love her. She doesn't love me as much as I love her. That's Correct. not true. <laughs> That's what I feel, babe. Um, and yeah, Derek is uh, pretty lost, I think, in life. Um, I think he's a vapor without a vape, you know? Uh, <laughs> like, nice. We, like, he, we wanted him to be a vapor, and then I tried vaping a bunch the first day, and it was just, it's bad, it's hard. Yeah, it's but, tough on the lungs. It's tough on the lungs. Actually, and yes, I it, remember you were like, I think he could vape, and I was like, just try it for the next <laughs> few hours and see what you think about that. And you were like, I actually, like 30 minutes a later, terrible like, idea. I don't yeah, want to do that. that. <laughs> They're still good. It would have been a tough one. Um, but he does drink a lot of Red Bull, and he's, and he's, um, <laughs> He's a candy fiend, you know? And she's a, she's a piece of candy for him, the biggest piece of candy. Right. So that's Somebody uh, described the scene for me where they're like, this character has to do this, and I was like, oh my lord, that sounds like written for Nick Braun. Yeah, him. desperately in love and not getting the, Yes, that's the, love the Nick Braun I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that feels like you. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of typecasting. Yeah. yeah, cool, just telling my life story. Just grew a chin, chin strap beard and that played myself. That was the myself, only difference. You know? uh, yeah, that's it. Coleman, what do you bring to the proceedings? I play the hero in the story. <laughs> yes. um, you know, understated, you know, simple, kind man yes. who, you know, does some really um, terrible things to people. Um, but and, uh, I play X, and he's based on uh, a real guy who did some, um, you know, sex trafficking and, you know, kidnapping, you know, all that really fun stuff. <laughs> right. And, uh, and uh, yeah, but basically I still wanted to find, like, what's human about him. And we had some size to him as well. And also to really examine, like, you know, he's, he's a, the, based on a pretty terrible person. But you also have to humanize them and sort of make you know, find out what makes them tick, what makes them, you know, what do they want? They want what everybody else wants too. They want family, the American dream, you name it. They want money. And, uh, and then they pay the cost later. So um, I play, you know, the gentleman hero. To himself. To himself. Exactly. Um, Coleman is wife. deeply charming and his character is is also deeply charming, but at the core is quite rotted. And I remember when showing one of the early cuts of the film, one of uh, our producers had said, I'm really worried that Coleman's too hot for this. And I was like, huh? But I remember when uh, my editor Joy and I would work on it, we would think about that and we were like, well, yes, he is quite beautiful, but I think what she meant is that his spirit is, is so gentle and you want to root for him, but this is a person that you really don't want to root for, but I think that is what feels really special about this with a lot of these characters when they do things that are truly apprehensive, you are still somewhat on their side because you're on these actor sides, right? You love the way that they perform and they play, and so the challenge is how you separate, how you process them, and then their approach to those characters. Mm. Uh, this sounds way more complex than your day job. Yeah, it's a little more complex than *Fear the Walking Dead*. Yeah, I'm still, you know, I'm still in an apocalyptic world in some way, and in some way, in the in Tampa, we were shooting in some places, and some motels felt a bit apocalyptic. Right. But right. it was it was just right for the the tenor that we needed for the film. We were and the it, Walking Dead, and we were the <laughs> <laughs> surrounded. Wow. The um the the it's the first movie I think that's based on a series of tweets, right? What is your? I saw credits. Somebody showed me the original tweet thread. Yeah. is credited to you as well. Yeah. So there's a, like right away before anybody sees the movie, they understand like, oh, this is something kind of special. But you had to live up to something that had already been special in the real world for a long time. Yeah. How difficult and how close do you want to get to the original thread? I'd say it's pretty close. It's spot on. Yeah, I think it's pretty close. There are probably, there are a couple of liberties taken within real pieces that she wrote. Um, and then there is a story, or there is something that happens in it that was not in the Twitter thread that we had talked about when I had asked it to sort of walk me through mm -hmm. the events. But it is, I would say, very close to what she penned. And did you, when you were going into it, 
to me, I would like having read the thread. It'd be like I can't touch this. Like this stands alone by itself. It'd be intimidating. Were you intimidated at all? No, uh, <laughs> I wasn't. I, I, I think the thing that pulled me to it was the voice mm -hmm. and her agency and what I had related to or what I tapped into was the the whole the the piece as a whole is. A processing of trauma and it's processing trauma through humor right. and I feel in my own life I've certainly done that and I think a lot of us you know in the thing that we do we have our ways of doing that and or we have access to that and so it I wasn't intimidated by it any more than you are by wanting to do a good job and hoping right. that you know you don't fail so damn eloquent um, mm -hmm. we're gonna hit you guys with some fast questions man don't think too hard just answer ready okay. What's the last? What's the <laughs> last? You got, you got this. What's the last show that you binged? Cheer, on Netflix. You are the third person to say that today. It's a it massive was favorite. Incredible. Sell it to the audience. Oh my god, I love this show so much. Everything about it, I can't stop talking about it. I don't want to give anything away because I don't think a lot of people have seen it. But it is truly one of the most special things I've seen. A solid portrait of America. So stressful. It was so stressful. I like had to take breaks while watching it because it was like really hurting me. It's genius. Excellent. You and Mel Kunis were the same thing. She went long on it and was just like, oh my God, I'm wrapped up in it. Beyond. Um, you on Netflix. You watched you as well. Yeah. How was it? What'd you find that you liked about it? Um, it was really dramatic and I actually like the bad guy. Like, the, yeah, I like him a lot. Right. He's hot. He's really hot. I like yeah. him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wanted to be locked in the glass. Box. He may be watching the IMDb like, right I totally now. I totally want to be locked to in the glass. I would like to be locked in the glass box. <laughs> <laughs> Top that, Riley. Honestly, the last thing I binged was, is it our planet? The, <laughs> the what, animal planet, planet Earth? Earth. Planet no, Earth. not planet Earth. It's not planet Earth. Oh, sorry. It's the Netflix one. Don't know what it's called. So it's a show about yeah. nature Animals. and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Binged a lot of koalas, binged, did you? <laughs> binged. Well done. Binged koalas. Honestly, I haven't binged in a while. I just started a Peaky Blinder. How is it? It's quite good. It's amazing. I want to add, I don't know how they create it's. Have you guys seen it? No. It's uh -uh. so. So good. What about you, sir? Um, I've been binging the act in Chernobyl simultaneously, oh. kind of trading them, trading them off. Back and forth. Yeah, sort, yeah, sort of. Um, very different stuff. Little surf and turf right there. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> very different Little styles. Nuclear stuff, and then some, um, yeah, suburban sort of home welfare, uh, warfare, I should say. Um, I'll be honest with you. The biggest yeah. answer up here has been Succession. Okay. Over and over again. People are like, I'm watch watching that. Succession. In a way where I'm like, I, I thought you said Netflix. You should see it. Is that, is that Netflix? HBO. I thought you said Netflix. I think it's a Showtime show. No, what? we were just is saying anything. Oh, anything? Yeah, why? Do you have something have that's not animal oriented? Oh, any, <laughs> no, yeah. Go ahead. You may change it. Any network. Yeah, oh, anything. No. I would have said just House Hunters. Oh, 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 Rupper and HGTV. Anything. Done and done. That's Mr. a great answer. House Hunters. Everyone trying to be classy. Like, uh, Peaky Blinders. Chip and Joanna Gaines. That's good. That is good. <laughs> what has yeah. it been like uh, for you? Cousin Greg is like taking off in a big bad way. You're the only way in for most people into that show. You're the only I, I, normal person. Greg. Yeah, I guess that's it. I, I mean, yeah, he's he's just wandering into a world that is totally not suited for him. So I think people have a good time watching him um, be clueless, but trying really hard to fit in. I think just we all, like you. just like me, you right left. now, at Sundance. I'm cousin Greg um, too, Nick. I think we're all Gregs in a way, you know? <laughs> I, 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 I watch that like Greggy. It's no. not, as I watch that show, I'm like, wait, that is so not cousin wait, Greg. Wait, that's literally you're not a Greg? No. You're not a Greg, okay. The, I would say of the characters on Succession, I feel like I'm more of a Shiv. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Thank more you. Of a Shiv. Yeah. Somebody yeah. agreed right away. Yes. They all agreed. An emphatic yes from the audience. Um, one of my favorite memories in making movies is I made a movie with Nick years ago called Red State. And Nick one day came in, I was a kid of the 70s and 80s, he comes in and he goes, um, I want to wear like long hair, but it's like shaved in the back and it's a real long, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but it's called a rat tail. And I'm like, I grew up with a rat tail. And he was like, oh, can I wear that? And I was like, absolutely. It made all the difference to that character. Yeah, I glued it in for the whole time that we shot. So I had to live with a rat tail for like six weeks. <laughs> and people didn't talk to me very much. 
I mean, people really ignored it's a tough me look. with that. What yeah, about it's when tough. you had the chin strap for the movie? What about that? Also, people didn't talk to me in Tampa very <laughs> much. Tell them you were a character my... actor. <laughs> I live in the character. <laughs> Coleman, um, what was the last thing that you binged? It was actually the last OG, season two. How was it? It was fantastic. It was fantastic writing. I thought it was really funny. I, I love him. Give it up for the cast and crew of Zola, ladies and gentlemen. Oh